This is my new laser. This is the Xtool F1 Ultra, and this laser is gonna take my laser engraving business to the next level. So the Xtool F1 Ultra. It is the world's first 20 watt fiber and 20 watt diode Galvo dual laser. Because of the dual laser setup and some fancy software, this laser can produce deep engravings. And the bit I'm most looking forward to is embossed images. To help speed up production process on the F1 Ultra, it is also fitted with a 16 megapixel camera and has the largest working surface of any desktop Galvo laser on the market. And basically what that means is it can process all types of material, wood, stone, acrylic, leather, metals, and even plastics. So what does any of that really mean? So here's a product I've sold a lot of to family and friends. It is a small beach chopping board. On these chopping boards, I engrave a kitchen weight chart on them, which is ideal for when people are baking or cooking a fancy mill for friends, instead of trying to blag it with a luxurious microwave mill. So first of all, I need to put it into the laser. Then over on Xtool Creative Space, I can click here on Refresh, and it will bring up an image of the cutting board in the laser. Now I need to choose my image. It needs resizing and rotating to make it fit, first of all, though. Right, so about there looks good. The camera works great, but for extra accuracy, I always use the framing tool. So finally, I get the cutting board lined up using this. And once I'm happy, I can set about choosing the power and speed of the laser. Xtool have a library of settings, but they don't have a beach cutting board setting in there. So for some basic settings to start with, I'll choose this pine coaster. You can see it's changed the speed and the power of the settings. Check that this is on blue light, then I can send the job to the machine. The job comes up on this control pad, and then all I have to do is double tap the green Xtool button. Sit back and allow the machine to go to work. Now I will say I have the protective door open on this machine purely so I can record it, but this does create some smoke. So I'll close the door and allow my fume extractor to do its job. Okay, so this chopping board has come out quite nice. It's ever so slightly lighter than what I would like, although the camera probably doesn't pick it up, but I do like a little bit of a darker engraving. So as I said, we use the settings that the Xtool library had for a pine coaster. So I'll have a little play with the settings and I'll see what I can come up with. So this one has come out much better. So this is the second attempt. This is the first attempt. It's still perfectly sellable. It's still perfectly usable. I just like a little bit of a darker engraving. So when you're happy with your settings, you can save them in the Xtool Creative software. And I've just saved mine under small beach chopping boards. Oh yeah, and anyone that's interested, these small beach chopping boards, I did buy from a large international retailer here in the UK. They were in the clearance section online and they only cost me a pound each. I think I've currently got them on sale on Etsy for £7, something like that, plus postage. Not a big earner, but the point is you need to get the stats up on Etsy, you need to get your sales up, you need to get your feedback up. Things like this are great for doing that job. So let's move on to coasters. Now these coasters are oak coasters and to be honest oak isn't the greatest wood for laser engraving. But if you remember from my previous video on starting a laser engraving business, I had a few alignment issues and wastage with the wooden coasters I was using, mainly due to alignment issues. I didn't always get them lined up properly during the framing process. And I think there was another time I didn't have the laser head raised up high enough and the coaster was slightly uneven and it dragged the coaster. Well, you don't have to worry about this with the Xtool F1 Ultra. Because of how Xtool have designed the base on this F1 Ultra, I can screw this stop into place. 
slide my coaster up to it, ensuring it's square. Focus a laser. Then once I've got my design sorted, I can double check with framing and then start the engraving. And then when it finishes, I can take the coaster out, put a new one in, double tap, and away we go. Now whilst that's working, I can set about editing the video. And just like that, we're finished. And we start the process again. So here are the finished coasters. They've had a sand and a light coat of satin varnish, and they've turned out great. Well, for oak anyway. With coasters, it's hard to price them. I mean, this isn't a massively sought after design and personalized coasters sell for more, especially when you have coasters that want Halloween stuff on or Christmas stuff on, you can price them a lot more. But personally, I would put these for sale at say £12 for a set of four plus postage. And again, it's another one of those cheap items to help boost your Etsy stats. Right, so, so far with this laser, we've only used the blue light diode laser part of it, and we've done pretty much the laser in basics, done wooden cutting boards, and we've done wooden coasters. And whilst we're on the subject of coasters, let's take a look at a slate coaster. Now I mentioned earlier at the start of the video that this laser is fitted with a 20 watt fiber laser. Now one of the uber cool features you can do with this is embossing. But to do embossing, you also need a depth map image. I said that all in one take, honest. And there's plenty of third party software out there where you can generate one of these depth maps. However, the Xtool Creative software has its own AI feature where you can design a picture and convert it into a depth map. All I typed in was bass relief dinosaur skeleton in the ground. It came up with this picture. So I use the AI tool to generate the depth map, put the coaster in the laser and then give it a whirl. So looking at the final result of this coaster, it's come out absolutely amazing. This is my first attempt at doing any embossing on anything. And it actually looks like a fossil skeleton that's just been dug out of the ground. I'm really happy with that. I can't wait to try this feature out on other things. Now, it can also emboss on lots of other materials. So first of all, I tried this embossing feature out on a piece of maple. And I use this picture here meant to be a dolphin. It has come out alright. I think if I went over it with a wire brush in a drill attachment it would come out quite nice. Now this is an oak coaster and as I say oak isn't the greatest wood for laser engraving. This is meant to be that same dolphin. So if you compare the two you can't even barely make it out. And then this was a piece of rosewood and I still need to play with the settings to get them right but this first one is a duck. Yes, it's one of my own ducks. This was meant to be a coin. I don't know why this one is so charred. Again, need to adjust the settings. And this is that dolphin image. I think if I clean them up as well, you'd probably get a much better result. But on the whole, for a first attempt, it's not too bad. So I managed to reveal a bit more detail, but definitely a bit less power needed next time. Now another item that's hugely popular is challenge coins. Now this is actually a brass coin and for this project we're gonna do now, it does have to be a brass coin, not a brass coated coin or a cupra nickel coin, a brass coin. And that is because we're gonna do some embossing on it. Now we're gonna use depth map images again and I've used AI in the Xtool Creator software to produce the coin image I'm gonna put on here. So when it first starts its embossing process on the coin, you could watch it for at least 45 minutes and you won't see anything change. But then not long after that, you start to see the shape of the coin appear. 
Now what you're seeing now is after about two hours of embossing. Now this coin took three and a half hours to emboss and it has come out great. However, it hasn't got all the detail in it that the picture had. And that's because although three and a half hours sounds a long time, I actually ran it a little bit too quick. So I reran a test and this one took five and a half hours and it came out something like that. Much better. So this is a brand new item to me. I wouldn't have a clue how much they sell for. I've never attempted to sell one of these. So I'd have to do some research to see what these go for. But a blank brass coin blank costs about between £2 and £2.50. So they're not the dearest of things to produce. So staying on the theme of embossing, there is one item I've seen marketed quite a lot. And this is this brass wax stamp blank. Now, I don't know about you, I don't send a lot of letters these days and I certainly don't put wax stamps on them. So maybe unless you're sending wedding invitations, I don't think that this would be highly profitable to use this for wax stamps. For me though, this is where I think this laser, wherever it is there, can actually transform my laser engraving business because I can use these to make maker's marks or maker stamps. You know, the ones you heat up with a blowtorch and then when you've produced your wooden item, you burn it on there. And why wouldn't you use a laser to do that? Well, sometimes these items are just too big to laser engrave. So then this is what we're looking at when we're finished. It says, James got wood, okay-ish woodworking. Now the proof's in the pudding. So let's heat this up and see how it stamps. Now I have been sent the F1 Ultra and its accessories by Xtool. I didn't buy any of this, but I am able to give my honest and open opinion of the machine. I've worked with Xtool now for nearly two years and they are genuinely a product I have great belief in as they make great products and listen to customer feedback. And the three laser machines that I do have from them have been nothing but a joy to use. If any of this interests you, be sure to check out the links in the description box below. So as you can see, that actually turned out really well on the pieces of wood that I put this stamp on. Being able to do this embossing on these things is definitely an extra string to my bow and it's definitely something I'm going to be looking into to offer for sale. Now this is one of the barbecue inspired cutting boards I've currently got for sale on Etsy but having this laser it got me thinking could you offer something else along with the cutting board that's personalized that could be supplementary to it? Well I come up with burger flippers. So I've got this stainless steel one here. Now you can see I have done some light engraving on it. What I've actually done is I've used one side to do a fiber engraving test using different speeds and powers to see what colors you could come up with. And then on the front, even though the green protective door is slid down, you can still see that using the blue light diode laser, it comes up with loads of different colors my power range is between 40 to 100 and the speed range is between 20 to 200 so i was thinking along the lines using this i can come up with some sort of silly design maybe that can go on this there's no reason why you couldn't put the same design on here as you could on here but we're here to have a bit of fun so let's have a bit of fun and using the references from the diode test grid on the other burger flipper i come up with this and there we go there's the finished result now I'm quite happy with the colours and how they came out. It is only a bit of fun. I know this probably won't be a popular design, but it's a good way of testing the different colours. If you're much more creative than me, you could come up with your own pictures to put on here, or I'll just go online and buy my own SVGs, which I'll convert to different colours, just as I have done here. So something I've not spoken about is the accessories you can get with this X-Tool F1 Ultra. This one is a conveyor belt attachment. So the great thing about this conveyor attachment is you can put things like these business cards on there and you can just chuck them on how you want. 
long as they're not overlapping and give it a go at engraving on them. So here's the image I want to put on these cards. So that looks about all right there. So I'm going to engrave these using the fiber. Power we'll put to, I think we'll put it to 60. Speed we'll put it 4000. And I need to frame out the material. Yep, so that's my business card there. Click fill. Then we go to processing. Now we're ready to run. So bearing in mind that all these business cards were placed at different angles on the conveyor attachment, they've all turned out bang on in the same place on each card. They've also come out with a really nice finish on, there's no compromise in the engraving on them either. Now bearing in mind earlier I mentioned about makers stamps, how about maker badges? I bought a bag of these 10 brass coated 20mm discs. I place them or chuck them on the conveyor. Found and aligned my design on the Extor Creative Space. Frame the image to the disc and then let the laser do its job. Now it does say that reflective materials are harder to get right using this conveyor attachment. But the business cards came out well, so I was hopeful of this. Now if the camera on the laser can't see the object, it just skips past them. So it missed two of these discs. So I just place them back on the end of the conveyor here. So out of these 10 discs, six have come out great, but these four are slightly over to one side. The image is still on the disc, just slightly side in one way. I could flip these discs over and try again on the other side, but I use them as they are. In fact, I have this bowl I made a few years ago and I'll put one of them in that. So those discs were just some cheap brass coated ones I bought off of Amazon to try on the laser. Going forward, I would buy some proper small brass discs and then I can emboss them or deboss them with whatever branding or logo I'm asked to do. So here's a selection of everything we've made in this video. With the exception of one thing, I have to say that this burger flipper I made a bit later on, this probably has to be one of the, my favorite things I made during this video. Definitely gonna be looking at making some more of these there's so much more I haven't even touched on. There's different accessories. There's a foot pedal. There's a, an individual switch that you can use to carry on making stuff. There's a rotary attachment. I haven't even got into using a rotary attachment with this machine. And another big thing that this machine is used for and is popular for is engraving on things like jewelry. This machine can engrave on gold and silver, platinum, basically any types of metal jewelry items. I had a quick go here on this rose gold bookmark I think it is. All I did was just engrave a little slogan and a logo.
So actually, I had better add this little bookmark to the display. Thank God it didn't fall over. Anyway, this is the end of the video on the Xtool F1 Ultra. Hope I've given you some ideas of things you can make and sell and a good overview of this machine. Now I'm just getting used to the settings and dialed in with the settings. There's so much more I'm gonna make on this machine. There is plenty of links in the description box below to Xtool, to the machine, to some of the materials I've used. There's even my Etsy site. I don't really use it a great deal, but there's a few things on there. And if you do click on any of the links below, they are affiliate links. So I do get a little kickback of commission, which I end up saving up and then putting back into the channel, buying things like the microphones and this new camera. Anyway, thanks for watching and I'll see you again in the next one.